I was straight until I fell for my teacher. My name is Aiden, and I'm 21 years old. Growing up in a deeply religious family with my mom, dad, and sisters, Ruth and Hannah, we're practically the perfect religious family anyone would ever come across. Despite being of an age where most dive into the dating scene, I had never been on a date, never kissed a girl, and never had a girlfriend. My mom would often drop subtle hints about potential relationships, especially with the daughter of my other friends from church. But strangely, I would be uninterested. I desperately wanted to break free from what felt like a cage. The opportunity presented itself when I received an email notifying me of an acceptance into a university in California. In the initial days, campus life seemed like a never-ending loop. My routine was predictable, almost down to the minute. Every night just before bed, I joined my family in prayer. I studied in the library during the day to warm up for classes and made sure to FaceTime my sisters, showing them the campus. It should have been enough, but it wasn't. While everyone around me effortlessly made friends, I was too shy to approach anyone and kept to myself instead. One afternoon, as I headed back to my dorm from the library, three guys approached me. Hey, you're Aiden, right? I'm Matt. These are Julian and Will, Matt said, introducing his friends. Hi, I replied, my voice small, wondering how he knew my name. It hit me suddenly. Maybe, just maybe, this was my chance to break out of my shell. How did you know my name? I asked. It's a campus. Everyone knows everyone, he said with a shrug. Wanna grab a burger or something? And maybe play video games in our room later? A grin spread through my face. This could be the breakthrough I needed. Sure, that would be nice, I said, silently thanking the heavens. On my first day of forestry class, I made sure to look at my absolute best. Matt, Julian, and Will, coincidentally attending the class too, convinced me to join them at the back, though I preferred the front row. The last thing I needed was for them to label me as a geek or nerd. However, I immediately regretted my decision. The minute the forestry lecturer walked in, he was quite tall, sporting a loosely fitted shirt that still showcased a lanky build. His sandy brown hair had that effortlessly ruffled look, and I wished I had taken a front row seat for a closer look. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Gale. I may look young, but rest assured I'll be handling this class, he declared. Laughter erupted, and I could see the girl swooning over him. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who thought he was gorgeous. I'd like to get to know you all. Feel free to ask any questions about the class before we start. Let's make this as interactive as possible, Jonathan continued. How old are you? A girl shouted. More laughter. 29, he replied. Do you have a girlfriend? Another asked. Okay, I don't think any of you have questions about this class, so let's get started, he said, beaming, the brightest smile I'd ever seen. His smile was contagious, and I had to bite my cheek to stop from smiling, too. Matt, sitting beside me, nudged me with his elbow. Dude, did you hear that? He asked. I shook my head, unaware he'd been talking to me. No, what's up? I asked. That blonde girl over there is staring at me. I think she's feeling me, Matt said, running his hand through his hair. I looked to see the girl supposedly staring at Matt, but it seemed like she was truly shooting hearts. Not at Matt, but at me. I think she's looking at me, I told Matt. He let out an annoying laugh, looking at me like I'd said something dumb. You? What would a hot girl like that see in you? He asked. I'm a better option. I should have been hurt by his comment, but funny enough, I wasn't. He could have her. Yes, you are, I said, pampering his ego. That weekend, I decided to visit the local plant nursery on campus. I wanted to send pictures of flowers to my sisters back home, per their request. I stumbled upon a display of forget-me-nots, their delicate blue blossoms standing out amidst the vivid hues. As I marveled at the flowers, a voice interrupted my thoughts. Quite enchanting, aren't they? I turned around to see Jonathan standing there with an amused twinkle in his eyes. I froze. Shocked that I was so close to him. Y yeah, I stuttered. I'm Aiden, a student in your class, and I'm honored to meet you, sir. I enjoy all your classes and... I'm glad you enjoy forestry, he began. In all the years I have taught, which aren't many, I admit, there have been a few people who actually like it. I get it, I answered with a nod, although I was a lot shyer than he appeared. Plus, convincing them to fall in love with my subject is a little hard when girls just want to take pictures of me and get my email address to woo me, he interrupted letting a hearty laugh. Even though he was laughing, I could see the subtle disappointment on his face. It probably hurt him, students liking his face but not his subject. It must be tough, I managed to put out. I did not know what else to say. He slowly nodded. I'm sure you understand my trouble, Aiden, he replied, his gaze lingering for more than a beat. I couldn't help but stare at him in subtle shock. Was that a compliment? Jonathan gave me a little smile and stepped back. Anyways, I should go. Glad to know you love the flowers, though. Keep it on. He gave me a thumbs up and left. I walked back to my dorm like I just hit the jackpot. 
Lost in my little victory parade, I didn't pay attention to the group of girls in front of me and accidentally bumped into them. One of them stumbled and reflexively I caught her. I'm so sorry about that, I said. As soon as our eyes met, I immediately recognized her as the blonde girl from Jonathan's forestry class. It's okay, she said in a tiny soft voice. You can make it up to me by going on a date with me. I was speechless. You're interested in me? I asked. She chuckled, gave my arm a touch, and with a provocative, I'll see you around, she sauntered off. I have no clue how to process that. Matt was eyeing her, and I was pretty sure he wouldn't appreciate her change of interest. How the heck would I explain that she approached me? Resolved to clear the air, I decided that the next time I saw her, I'd politely let her know I wasn't interested. The moment never materialized. While Matt bombarded me with his updates about the blonde girl whose name was Susan, my mind was fixated on Jonathan Gale. I strategically attended all his classes, front row seat secured. Occasionally, his gaze met mine during his lectures, and he'd shoot me a warm smile that turned my insides to mush. One evening, Matt called me. There's a small party at 9pm tonight. You should totally come, he suggested. I'd rather not. Parties aren't my thing, and tomorrow's Monday, I hesitated. It's a small one, Aiden. No alcohol, no smoke, just soda and good music. Susan and her girls will be there. I need some moral support when I ask her out, Matt insisted. Julian and Will can give you all the support you need. Plus, are you sure you want to ask her out? Jeez, Aiden, are you saying I can't? People like you can't, not me. I know Susan is head over heels for me, even if she's playing hard to get. Who knows? You might find a girl too. Although I think the chances are slim, Matt pressed. I was irritated, but I swallowed it. Okay, I'll be there, I conceded, knowing Matt wouldn't let up until I did. Just a harmless party, or so I thought. Nervousness crept over me. I had never attended a party on campus, but I trusted Matt. This could be a chance to step out of my comfort zone and experience something new. On my way to the venue, I passed the local nursery, and to my shock, I saw Jonathan laughing with a girl with beautiful red hair. Jealousy gripped me as they admired the flowers together. Pissed at what I'd seen, and even more at myself for seeing it, I accidentally hit my leg on a stone and cursed loudly. I contemplated turning back due to my sour mood, but my phone buzzed with a text from Matt asking me where I was, and I decided to not disappoint him. As I approached the party venue, the thumping bass and lively chatter grew louder. I took a deep breath and stepped inside. The scene was vibrant to say the least. This was no small party. It was almost like everyone on campus was there, and for a second, I felt shy. Matt spotted me from across the room and waved me over a white grin on his face. Julian and Will were already deep in conversation with a group of people, and I joined them, trying to keep up with the introductions and forget about Jonathan. The party started innocently enough, but the atmosphere soon took a swift turn. Soda cans were replaced by beer bottles, and the volume of the music cranked up. My unease intensified as I watched people drinking and making out with each other. I scanned the room, hoping to find my friends and share my decision to leave, but they were nowhere in sight. The discomfort grew, and I couldn't bear to stay any longer. As I turned to leave, my path was intercepted by Susan and her friends. Why don't you stay, Susan said provocatively, reaching out to touch my arm. Instinctively, I pulled back, but she closed the gap, approaching me with an unsettling confidence. It felt like a scene from a movie, but I was far from entertained. The once promising party now felt like a trap. Relax, Aiden, Susan cooed, her cleavage on full display. You're quite a hottie, did you know? Your skin is so nice and smooth. She leaned in for a kiss, but I pulled away just in time. I was mortified, caught in a situation I never anticipated. Disgust tightened in my gut, and I wrestled away from the girls. As I made my way towards the exit, my steps faltered as I observed Julian and Will, whom I had been searching for, blocking my path. Matt came out of nowhere and punched me in the face. I can't believe you, Aiden. You're an asshole. How could you go after Susan even after everything I told you? What kind of friend does that? He screamed. I was so confused, I tasted something metallic and touched my face. Blood streamed down my nose. If this is about Susan, I can explain. I'm not interested in her, Matt. I don't like her, I said, hoping to ease the tension. I called out to Susan, hoping she would clear my name and tell Matt she was the one interested in me, but instead, she came up with the narrative that I was all over her and she rejected me to save herself, the embarrassment. Matt didn't care about anything I had to say. He lunged at me again, but I was quick to dodge his blows. I didn't want to fight, but Julian and Will soon joined in. I struggled to get away from them, but outnumbered, I ended up on the losing side with Julian and Will kicking and hitting me. The next thing I knew, everything went dark. The next day was a walk of shame back to my dorm, bruised and broken both inside and out. Whispered and hustled laughter followed me like an annoying soundtrack, and I became the subject of jokes across the entire school. I didn't understand what I had done to deserve my fate. Betrayed, confused, and alone, I struggled to attend classes hiding in the last row to avoid drawing too much attention to myself. 
especially from Jonathan. I didn't want him to see me this way, but somehow, he did. After the class, I attempted to leave without being noticed, but he caught up to me, visibly concerned about my appearance. Aiden, can we talk for a second? He asked, guiding me to a quiet corner of the classroom. I looked around, catching Matt, Julian, and Will eyeing me. Yes, but not here, please, I said. Jonathan understood, and we ended up at the local nursery. Aiden, are you okay? Did something happen? He spoke gently. I hesitated, my eyes drooping to the ground. Just some trouble with people I thought were friends. He nodded understandingly. Friends can be tricky sometimes. I know this because I struggled with friends while I was in university. And even now, I still struggle with genuine friendships. But just know I'm here if you need someone to talk to. I managed a small smile, but then the memory of seeing him with a girl hit me, and I sighed. Why are you helping me? Is this something you do for all your students? I asked bitterly. Jonathan stared at me, his gaze lingering, and my heart skipped a beat. No, you're right. I don't know why I want to help you. I don't usually do this, he said, getting up. He took out some band-aids from his pocket and placed them in my palm. There was a coldness about him, a sadness that made me feel guilty for being the reason. I'm sorry, I said, just as he was about to leave. Don't be. You didn't say anything wrong, he replied. At that moment, a girl with beautiful red hair strolled by and greeted Jonathan, with a hug. It was the same girl I had seen him with on the night of the party. I'm Summer, the girl introduced as soon as Jonathan left. Aiden, I managed to say, even though I wasn't in the mood for conversation. I knew that. Everyone knows Aiden, and what happened during the party last week, she laughed. There was something warm about her, and even though I didn't want to talk to her, I couldn't help it. So you and Jonathan are close? I asked her. A bit, just as friends. I took forestry last year, and I plan on setting up a small garden. Jonathan has been so helpful, plus I think he has other sexual preferences, Summer said with a playful wink. I was supposed to condemn the idea immediately because all my life I knew relationships were meant to be between a man and a woman, but instead I entertained the notion and for the first time, I let my mind wander into thoughts of a relationship between Jonathan and me. You're blushing, Summer teased. God, no, I, I'm just cold, I lied, trying to brush off the unexpected warmth creeping into my cheeks. We should be friends, Summer said all of a sudden. I gave her a puzzled look and she smiled. As you can see, she said, gesturing to her questionable dress sense and hair. I'm weird, and you're weird. We should stick together. Sure, I don't think you would beat me up if you were mad at me, I joked. Summer was a bit strange, but she became the only real friend I had in university, aside from Jonathan. Weirdly, I found myself included in a trio with Jonathan, Summer, and me. While they worked on her mini garden, I mostly sat back and observed. Honestly, I watched Jonathan more. Even with mud on his clothes and dirt on his hands, he managed to pull off an amazing look, and I wondered how someone like him was still single, or even if he was. For all I knew, he could have been lying. Jeez, isn't Jonathan hot? Summer told me one day after she had excused herself to use the restroom. I nodded, feeling a blush creep up my cheeks. But I blamed it on the weather. Do you have a crush on him? I asked Summer. I wish. Jonathan thinks I'm a donut. When I wasn't in class, I spent most of my time hanging out with Summer, and I considered myself lucky to have found someone as amazing as she was. A week later, we had to go to a field trip, which was part of the curriculum for forestry. Listen up, guys. These maps will help you locate various herbs. I've marked some spots with an X, so avoid these areas. Ticked areas are good to go. Use your textbooks to identify the herbs. Form groups of four, Jonathan announced, distributing maps. I was about to find a group when Matt, Will, and Julian rushed to my side. I refused to be their partner and opted to find another group, but every other group was full. Come on, Aiden. We don't bite, Matt teased with Julian, Will, and nodding like puppets. Don't worry. I've forgiven you for betraying me. I said nothing and followed the map to find the herbs. We unintentionally steered away from the group and I failed to notice the gradual distancing. Soon, it was just Matt, Julian, and Will, and me alone. Matt approached me first and hit me on the chest. We still have unfinished business, Matt said. Jesus, Matt, can you stop? You made your point. I'm the loser, you're the winner, I said. That's the thing. I lost my chances with Susan because of you, Matt shouted, pushing me again. I lost my balance and fell, rolling down towards the end of the forest and losing my map in the process. It took a while to stand up as I had bruises from the fall. The atmosphere grew tense as I tried to retrace my steps, but every path seemed unfamiliar. I called out to Matt, but I heard nothing. Panic set in and I began to hear strange rustlings in the underbrush. Suddenly a wild boar emerged, its eyes fixed on me. I bit my cheeks, hard to stifle the scream that threatened to come out. The boar charged at me with speed, but before I could react, someone lunged between me and the creature. It was Jonathan, his shirt hooked on a branch that bruised his skin. He grabbed his gun from his pocket and fired in another direction. 
The wild animal scooted back, but it was far from over. So it wasn't until he had fired the last of his bullet that the animal actually left us alone. That's the last one, Jonathan said. If it hadn't run away, then... He stopped and turned to me. Are you alright, Aiden? Jonathan asked. I... I don't know what happened. Matt pushed me, I stammered, tears streaming down my face. How did you find me? Jonathan's expression darkened with disappointment. I heard someone shouting about a girl and thought to see what was going on. Are you sure you're okay? You're not hurt anywhere. Jonathan questioned extremely concerned, despite his own ruffled state. I'm fine. Are you okay? You're hurt, I said, briefly touching his face. My eyes locked with Jonathan's. His face had tiny scratches and a large tear marred the fabric on his shoulder. In that poignant moment, the enormity of his selfless act for me sank in. Unable to contain my feelings, I embraced him, tightly, my tears flowing freely. Thank you, I whispered through the choked sobs. When we finally pulled away, Jonathan gently wiped the tears from my face and helped me to my feet. Let's head back to the group, he said. In the aftermath of the incident, swift and stringent measures were taken by the school. Matt, Julian, and Will received suspensions and failing grades in forestry. Later that day, Summer offered to clean up a small wound that I hadn't noticed earlier on my right leg. I narrated every single thing that had happened while Summer listened attentively, her eyes filled with concern and understanding. After I finished, a smile played on Summer's lips. I'm glad those idiots got what they deserved. I can't believe this was all for a girl who cares only about herself. Jeez. Is Matt in the third grade or what? Summer remarked. He's just entitled, I guess, I replied. But anyway, you and Jonathan, huh? I always suspected something was going on, Summer said. I furrowed my brows, not catching her drift. What do you mean? She leaned in, her tone teasing. You know, your knight in shiny armor fighting off wild creatures for you? Jonathan wouldn't do that for just anyone. I laughed nervously, dismissing the idea. Come on, Summer, he's just my teacher, nothing more. Her playful expression turned serious as she nudged me gently. Aiden, you can't deny there's a connection there. I shook my head, feeling uneasy. It's not like that. I respect him. He's helped me, but it's not, you know, like that. Are you sure? I've seen the way you look at him, and the way he looks at you, Summer said. I stumbled over my words, denying any romantic feelings. Summer chuckled, assuring me that it was just a joke, but as we parted ways, her words lingered in my mind. Later, alone in my dorm room, I reflected on my conflicting emotions. There was an undeniable fondness I felt for Jonathan. However, my religious beliefs and societal norms clashed with these feelings. I pushed them down, attributing it to admiration and gratitude. After all, he was my teacher and nothing more. I couldn't afford to entertain thoughts that went against everything I had been raised to believe. That evening, I went to a chapel close to school. I didn't have any specific prayer points, I just felt like I needed to pray. Surprisingly, I saw Jonathan there too. I waved at him, and as he walked closer to me, I couldn't help but scold myself for entertaining thoughts of kissing him. Can we walk outside? He asked. I was relieved by the suggestion, and we stepped out together. So, you're religious? I asked him. To be honest, no, he replied, letting out a small laugh. So why did you come here? I asked, curious. Jonathan smiled at me. Because I feel like I'm about to do something I shouldn't with someone I shouldn't, and it's driving me nuts, he confessed. A lump formed in my throat, and I forced myself to swallow it. What do you mean? I asked. Jonathan looked at me and tapped me on the shoulder. Never mind, he said. You? Why did you come here? I looked at Jonathan for a while. Because I feel like I'm about to do something with someone I shouldn't, I replied. Is it Summer? I've seen how close you two are, Jonathan asked. No, it's someone else. Someone really cool, I clarified. As I returned home for the holidays, I told my family all about my experiences in school and the friends I had made. Mom and Dad were thankful that I hadn't changed, but I knew that they were wrong. I had changed. In fact, I had fallen in love with my teacher. Throughout the holiday, I thought about my feelings and I knew that I had to address it eventually. The beginning of the next semester was a mix of excitement and nerves as I walked to the campus, pathways with Summer by my side. I decided to share my feelings about Jonathan. I trusted Summer, and it felt like the right time to confide in someone. Summer, I need to tell you something, I began hesitantly. She looked at me with genuine curiosity. What is it, Aiden? I took a deep breath. I think I have feelings for Jonathan. More than just admiration or gratitude, it's complicated. Summer's eyes widened in surprise, and she quickly composed herself. I knew it. Aiden, feelings are never straightforward. Have you told him? I shook my head. No, not yet. I'm not even sure how he feels, and I'm afraid it might complicate things. All my life, I lived based on principles that my family had laid out for me. I had to act in a certain manner to please people, but now I felt something that I'd never felt before, and it felt so right. 
What if he feels the same way? You know that's the end of his career, right? Summer asked, concerned. It dawned on me that she was right. A potential relationship would jeopardize Jonathan's career as a lecturer in the university. I didn't want to be responsible for ruining the career Jonathan had worked so hard for. I felt so stupid to even consider a relationship in the first place. A lecturer and a student? I tried to avoid Jonathan, but it was particularly impossible, with him always smiling at me and asking about my well-being. I couldn't keep it to myself any longer. I just had to tell him. Besides, there was a big chance he wouldn't reciprocate my feelings. Jonathan, can we talk? I have to tell you something important, I said, after class. He nodded, and we walked towards the local nursery. Of course, Aiden. Is there a problem? I shook my head. Thankfully, there was no one in sight, and I felt comfortable sharing my feelings. Remember that day at the chapel when you asked me why I was there? I asked Jonathan, without wanting him to respond. I continued. It was because of you. I feel like I'm about to do something I shouldn't do with you. Something like what? Jonathan asked, closing the gap between us. I kept breathing fast as his eyes locked on mine. He lifted my chin with his index finger and pressed his lips to mine. Something like this? He asked me with a smile. My heart raced fast as I nodded yes. I pressed my lips to his again, and a small laugh escaped my lips as I pulled away. Something like that, I whispered. I've had feelings for you for a long time, Aiden. And I know it's wrong, but I couldn't care less. I tried to be close to you, but I couldn't be too close. You don't know how happy I am to hear you say this, Jonathan confessed. I couldn't believe my ears. Jonathan liked me. Jonathan and I agreed to meet later that night for a little date, and I couldn't have been happier. Little did I know, our conversation had not gone unnoticed. Unbeknownst to me, Susan had overheard my confession. She saw an opportunity to use this information against me, perhaps as revenge for her wounded pride. As I walked back to my dorm that day, I was about to text Summer about the new development when Susan cornered me in a secluded spot on campus, smirking with a devious glint in her eyes. I heard about you and Jonathan, Aiden. So you're gay? I mean, you could have said that instead of rejecting me the way you did. I felt a pang of anxiety. It was the first time anyone had called me gay, but surprisingly, it didn't sway me. At least not as much as I believed it would. I thought it was the other way around, Susan. You told everyone you rejected me. I even got beaten for it. Why does it still bother you? Susan looked at me like she couldn't believe my guts. Imagine what would happen to Jonathan's career if anyone were to find out about your relationship, she said slyly. I couldn't even stand her, so I walked away without saying another word. I was shaking, however, and if one looked close enough, they would also see the flush on my face. Another moment and I would have started crying. Fuck, it hurt. Would I really have people talk to me like that? That night, I met with Jonathan at a spot outside campus. Truly, what we were doing was going to hurt his career, and I couldn't do that to him. To my surprise, he had arranged a small rooftop date. It felt so unreal and magical, and I couldn't believe our love was going to be so short-lived. Hi, I said quietly. He approached me and leaned in to kiss me, but I pulled back. I'm sorry, we can't be together. Someone knows about us and it's going to ruin your career, I said quickly, tears falling down my eyes. Jonathan held me close and wiped the tears from my eyes. Today was my last day as a lecturer here, he announced after a while. What? No. Is it because of me? Why would you leave? You love teaching, I asked, more tears falling. Jonathan held me tight and planted a kiss on my forehead. Maybe, but I want to focus on my work. I feel like there's a lot I need to do. And now that I have you, I know I made the right decision, he said, his words sending shivers down my spine. I heard what Susan said to you, and I know you're worried about me, but you don't have to be. She has her own issues. I stared at Jonathan. What do you mean? I asked him. Well, for starters, I know she's been cheating on all her tests, and I have proof, Jonathan said with a smile. It could cost her her scholarship in the school. She's already failing forestry. I'm sure she'll treat you with the utmost respect from now on. I can't believe it. So it, does this mean we can be together? I asked, hopeful. It's up to you, Jonathan replied. I hugged him tightly and screamed yes. Jonathan quit soon after that and started working on his forestry project. I did not have as much idea about it in the beginning, but with how we spent time now, the plan was slowly seeping in. I was glad to know and love such a wonderful man. Obviously, that wasn't it. Whenever weekends hit, I would find my way to his place. Often, we would debate about who was the better cook between us. By the end of the second weekend, we had pronounced the winner. It was me, of course. As I put the last of the dishes on the dining table, Jonathan asked me about my future plans. I told him that I was still planning, but I still had some idea. Well, he began, you have lots of time on your hands, and I'm assuming you will help me through it. That and much more, he promised. However, several such sweet moments between us weren't the only thing in our relationship. 
Besides the struggle to bridge the gap between the age difference and the maturity levels, I had another thing to worry about. My family. Precisely how they would react to Jonathan. As one would expect, it went strangely and absurdly. They hated me the moment I spoke the truth they couldn't hear. Are you serious? This is not some misunderstanding? My father asked, as if trying his best to hold himself together. But I had already wasted enough of my time ignoring my needs and desires, and I did not want to go through that all over again. I'm serious, Dad, I replied, and I'm sorry if this is not what you want to hear, but get out, he barked, and pointed at the door with trembling hand. Get out before I do something I would regret. Jonathan held my hand. He was ready to do whatever I wanted to do. On the way back to California, I cried nonstop, but Jonathan was there to comfort me. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I didn't know it was going to hurt so much, I admitted. Jonathan hugged me tightly, stroking my hair. No matter what anyone says, I'm proud of you for not letting anyone dictate your path. I'm proud of you, he said. Coming out happens once, and you won't ever need to feel this pain again, so let it all out. And he was right. I was proud of myself for pursuing what felt right. I love you, Jonathan, I whispered desperately. I love you too, Aiden. Conclusion At school, acing tests became second nature. Months passed without a word with my parents, and eventually I moved in with Jonathan. In the embrace of his home, surrounded by the sincerity of greenery, we found solace in each other. The initial hurdles were tough, but our love provided the strength to endure whatever challenges lay ahead. To my surprise, I discovered that Summer was in a relationship with a girl. I felt genuinely happy for her, finding someone who loved her unconditionally. Life was changing, and it seemed to be for the better. Out of the blue, I received a text from my parents inviting me over. Confused but curious, another text followed, suggesting I bring my boyfriend along. A smile broke across my face. I couldn't decipher whether they had finally accepted us, but the invitation was a step forward, and I allowed myself to hope for the best. The end. Have you ever faced a situation where you had to choose between following family expectations and embracing your true self? Share your experiences in the comments. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.